Now, types of drainage systems. Before I go f too much further, if you are going to do any digging, you need to call 811 before you dig. Okay, it's your responsibility, and they'll, they'll mark the utility lines. It's free. Uh, it is worth the call one to two weeks before to give yourself time to, um, you know, and to give yourself that assurance that you know where the lines are. Because if you, if you break something, you're going to be held responsible. So just keep that in mind. So let's look at French drains first. So French drains are uh, pipes in the ground, and they're, they're uh, amendments to the soil profile that we do. We basically dig a trench, and we line that, that trench with gravel and then lay either corrugated pipe or we can use solid PVC pipe uh, with holes drilled in the bottom. And then we fill the rest of the, rest of the way up with gravel and then top it with sod. Now, why do we do this? This is French drains are not designed to carry water anywhere uh, with, for, as original intent. What they're designed to do is they're designed they're designed to uh, f help water filter down through the soil profile and get it into the subsoil. So it's it's that's what it's designed to do. Now, yes, there is excess water that will get taken away. That's why you do slope them and give them somewhere to go. But in general, they're designed to help the water penetrate down through the soil profile, as opposed to subsurface uh, drains like solid pipe that just designed they're designed to take it somewhere. Uh, like you see on your right. Uh, again, this is what French drains are designed to do. A lot of people will put these um, away from their houses, like on downspouts. Uh, it's especially if you can get 10 feet or greater from the building foundation. Again, I am not an engineer, so uh, I'm not going to get into engineering on that. But you do use solid pipe for about 10 feet or greater, um, and then you would get out to... Uh, and, and then you start using your French drains and perforated pipe to help that water penetrate the soil profile and get it down in the subsoil. That's where you, you want it to naturally filter is what you want. And you can actually use these geotextile underlayments under the, tre under the trenches. And um, you want to make sure you're using uh, a, you know, a sleeve over top of the perforated pipe to help prevent it from clogging. Uh, it's worth the extra money to get that. So now... Uh, you can get the pre-sleeved corrugated pipes, uh, but you can also get sleeve for PVC pipes. PVC pipes are a little more durable, um, and they last a little longer. Uh, but keep in mind, you're also compacting this with gravel, so it's going to be pretty protected. Um, I mentioned the slotted pipe versus PVC. Uh, th there's not really a huge cost difference. Uh, the PVC pipe is going to run you about a dollar a foot. Uh, same thing with uh, a little over a dollar foot. Excuse me. And same thing with the with the corrugated. It's going to run you roughly about a just shy of a dollar a foot. Uh, I think for a hundred foot roll, you can get it, get it for eighty dollars or something like that. Now, this is what I like about um, if I'm gonna buy a French drain, this is what I'm probably gonna get. Um, and now, if you don't want to fool with using gravel. You can use these prefabricated uh, French drains. These are uh, French drains that already have a their corrugated pipe slotted that already have a sock or sleeve over them to protect them from uh, from silt and uh, sediment infiltration. They also are lined with peanuts, styrofoam peanuts, and they actually work pretty well. And what that's designed to do is it's designed so all you have to do is dig the trench, lay it in there, get your slope right, and cover it back up. You don't have to, um, uh, and, it require, and it helps for use less gravel. And that's a lot. That's a lot when you're when you're, you know, hauling in gravel for that much that much of a trench. So these are really a convenience product. Now, yes, they are more expensive. Uh, for a 10 foot, they're about five dollars a, a foot, roughly. Um, now, if you sit down and do the math and calculate the amount of gravel you'll need for an average French drain, it's about the same. Um, it's it's a little cheaper to do gravel, but it's a lot. But it's this is this is definitely a convenience product. 
So, uh, you, know, you know, that's what you got to take in consideration. Now, installation, we'd obviously, you know, uh, remove the top layer of sod. And then we'd dig our trench. And uh, you can either dig by hand or you can use a, you can use a, a ditch witch or something like that. Uh, I can tell you that you might want to consider digging by hand near utility lines because that way you can go a little more carefully. Uh, and then the, the biggest thing you want to make sure is you're getting your slope right. When you have, uh, and you want about a 1% slope or one inch for every fall of, one inch of fall for every eight feet. Why that is, is because you want to make sure the water's flowing. Water flows downhill. If we have no slope, the water will only flow, will not flow very well. If we have a negative slope or a low area, you're going to get pooling. And that's going to cause clogs. It's going to cause, um, it's also going to cause uh, areas where the, it'll back up. So you don't want that. You want to make sure you're having a good positive slope uh, all the way to where you're taking the water. Uh, for French drains, again, you want to wrap it in geotextile fabric. Uh, you can get these at drain supply stores uh, or at landscape supply stores, farm farm supply stores. And yes, I know this is in a house, but uh, right here in the picture, but this is the same process we do if we were doing a, uh, uh, you know, out in the landscape, but probably a little deeper. And now what these are designed to do, the the idea is that the holes are facing downward. Um, and what the, what's this designed to do is the water infiltrates the gravel, comes up through the bottom of the pipe, and then flows out the pipe, uh, the excess water. That's what that's designed to do. And this is a look at the uh, prefab ones. So you can see a lot less uh, work and a lot less gravel goes into that. Uh, you will have some excess soil, so that's good for a garden spot, you know, or something like that that you're working on. So just keep that in mind that you'll have some excess soil, and take your time and get the slope right. If the slope is the the digging is the hardest part. The slope is the most critical part. So it's it's better to take your time and and get the slope right as opposed to, uh, you know rushing it and then figuring out later that your slope's not right and it's not draining correctly. So once they're installed, uh, if you're using, if you're not using the prefab ones, you want to cover that with gravel. If you're using the prefab ones, you cover them up with soil and then we'll put your sod back on top. And now your surface drains and catch basins, these are designed to catch the, to pool standing, to remove pooling standing water. So this is what you would use if you have an area that's just pooling, and you need to drain it. You need to drain it quickly. Your, you know, your soil drains pretty good. Let's say you do a perk test. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a perfect example. My yard, my backyard, drains pretty, pretty, pretty well with a normal rainstorm. After a normal rainstorm, my yard, my backyard drains in about three hours or so, two to three hours. You won't see any standing water then you may, to get it fully dry, it takes about 24 to 48 hours, maybe 72 hours, depending. The average perk test for septic septic tanks are around, I think it's around 40, 72 hours perk time. Don't quote me on that. Again, I'm not an engineer. But if you need to remove standing water and get it off the, off the ground pretty quickly, you can use surface drains. Now, these come uh, in what they call catch basins. Um, you can, uh, the these atrium grates are more used for uh, landscape beds, but the the these come in kits. They you can piecemeal them together. You can buy the actual drain the catch basin box and then buy the grate separately. It may save you a couple of bucks, but won't you know it's, it's just as convenient to buy the buy the whole kit uh, and shop around on these. You can get them at big box stores. You can get them at landscape supply stores online. So there's lots of different uh, avenues you can get these. And, they, and these are nice because they fit either corrugated or they fit PVC pipe uh, with some adapters. Now, surface drains, like I said, they have different applications. You can use them in yard drains in low areas to help uh, help remove standing water. Uh, you can actually put them at the, in before uh, gutters, like at the end of gutters. So that way you get any debris that comes off um, the gutter, off the roof. That way it gets collected in the catch basin and not in your pipe. Um, 
very good technique. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're redoing a drain system or if you're installing a new one, I would encourage you to go ahead and spend the money and and get the, and install these in front of each uh, downspout. That way, you go ahead and just have it in there. It's easier to clean that way. Um, I, I know someone out there is looking at this and going, "Wait a minute! the The bottom of the catch basin may have mosquitoes in it." You can use mosquito dunks, which are a biological control. They're perfectly safe. They're all, it's, it's a bacteria. It's in a little donut shape, a little dry thing. You, you can put those down inside the, the, the drain boxes once every month or, once, or after, after a, a, rain, a heavy rainstorm, and you'll be just fine. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems with that. So that's one, one thing you can combat it with. Now, you don't always need a 12-inch or a 9-inch drain. Most of the time, it's, if it's in front of a downspout, it's going to be 9 inches or to 12 inches uh, catch basin. If you just need you know, a little bit of standing water removed, you can always use a 4- to a 6-inch drain, a uh, round drain. So, And that's what these are. Now, with these, you would use, you can connect them to French drains, but you can also connect them to solid pipe as well. Again, same process. We dig out and we uh, put it. Ideally, we have some little bit of gravel on the bottom of this to help catch some, to help stabilize it. And then, of course, you can see here. Now they've they've chosen to go in here and put uh, the gutter connectors on here, but they've still got a way to catch some of that uh, some of that debris right there. But these are also pretty easy to flush out too if you have a debris that um, that come in. But ideally, you want to put that put a catch basin in front of that. Now channel drains, channel drains are good for driveways and along uh, hard surface areas. These are a little more permanent, and they're a little more durable. They're also more expensive, but uh, and they can they come in all different types. They come in decorative forms, the utilitarian forms. They can so in other words, they can look ugly or they can look pretty. You can buy fancy ones that look prettier, have designs in them. But these are just designed. Let's say your driveway slopes towards your house, towards your garage. Most likely, your contractor's probably already put one in, uh, but you can put one in to help carry some of that water away from the from the driveway and f keep it from flooding your garage. And most of these come prefabbed, prefabricated. So you simply just uh, you know dig out the trench, get your slope right, and then install them and then connect them to a solid pipe to help carry the water to, the, to wherever you're wanting to go. And now sometimes they, uh, people put, uh, put them in concrete casings uh, so to make them a little more stable. So uh, again, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I would, uh, for, usually for channel drain installations, most people hire a contractor because they tend to, uh, there's a little more involved there's a little more involved, and you just want to make sure you're doing it correctly. Now, pop-up emitters. So, one of the problems that um, that you often see with the ends of pipes, where the, where we're taking the water to, is we have the discharge water is not, uh, or the pipes open, and so critters can climb up through the pipe, and they can get in there. This is one way to prevent that. So these pop up emitters, they're, they work on hydrostatic pressure, so water pressure, the pressure behind the, the volume of water behind in the pipe is actually what pushes that little meter, that little button up, and then the water can flow out. When the water pressure goes down, there's not as much water in there, it closes back up, helps with mosquito prevention, helps with uh, rodents and critters coming up through the pipe and living in the pipe. 